Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Mental Health at Home. This has been a month-long series of interviews with therapists, and it's been a partnership between NAMI Juno and the Juno Suicide Prevention Coalition. We want to make sure that folks in town have resources, know what's available in terms of the individuals who provide mental health care, and also the different types of mental health care that are available, and the different reasons why one might want to pursue receiving mental health care. So to that end today, we have art therapy student, Megan Gunkel, who is also a NAMI Juno um, staff member. Megan, thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. And so what are we gonna talk about today? What are we doing? What is art therapy? What do you got going on? <laughs> so many questions. Um, so art therapy is the use of art in therapy, just as it sounds, to facilitate self-awareness, and promote healing for people um, who are going through a variety of experiences or may have a variety of mental health conditions. Um, I do want to clarify up front that art therapists do not analyze art. That's a huge misconception. Um, art therapists can't just kind of assign meaning to a client's artwork because artwork is very personal and everyone as they create uses their own personal symbols and so if an art therapist were to assign meaning to that, it would likely be them projecting onto that. So we can't automatically know what you're thinking just from what you create. So just to alleviate any anxieties up front, there's that. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So I think it's like play therapy, which folks might be a little bit more familiar with, where like, yeah, maybe you're playing shoots and ladders, or maybe you're playing a spelling game or Wheel of Fortune or whatever. And it's not about like, ooh, this kid didn't win at Wheel of Fortune. There must be a problem at home. It's a way to facilitate a conversation and to um, get some insights going for the individual. Yeah, absolutely. And also, um, along those same lines, it's really important that people understand you do not have to be an artist to benefit from art therapy. I think when I talk to people about art therapy, the first question is, but I'm not good at art how can I do art therapy if I'm not an artist? And um, actually people who are not artists can benefit perhaps more than people who are artists because you don't have that um, skill or the ability to manipulate things in a way that you could if you were an artist. And so then you could kind of hide behind your skill set or hide behind beautiful things um, when in reality, art therapy isn't there so that people can make beautiful artwork that will go in galleries or hang on their walls. Um, it's there so that people can get into the process of creating and look into underlying things that might be going on in their lives and also give them a different perspective of their different challenges in a way that they haven't seen before. So if you think about telling someone that you're angry, oh, I'm angry, and you're trying to describe that feeling, but then what would happen if you went and you tried to draw how angry felt? It's just a very different way of thinking mm -hmm. and it gives you a different perspective on what you're going through in your daily life. Yeah, so it seems like it might just be helpful, especially for somebody who isn't able to label their emotions or speak comfortably about how they feel. This mm -hmm. might be another method of getting them to either open up. That's not exactly what I'm looking for. Not necessarily open up, but like another way to put language to the way that they're feeling. Exactly, yeah, because the other huge benefit is that sometimes we don't have words for what we're experiencing. We don't have words to describe what we've gone through in life or the depth of our emotion or the depth of our thoughts. But whenever we're able to externalize what we've internalized for so long, again, we gain that new perspective and then through working with an art therapist, we can begin to assign verbalizations to what we've been internalizing, but haven't had the words for, for a while. Okay, so we're calling this a separate thing. We're calling this art therapy. It's therapy with using art as a medium to have the conversation. No different than if we were playing a game to have the conversation or just having a conversation without any kind of uh, tactile interaction. Right. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And like, does art therapy exist in the wild? <laughs> like, is this, like, are there art therapists? Uh, did you know, have any art therapists? Are you going to be the first? Um, no. So Dorlin Alper is currently the only trained, credentialed, and practicing art therapist in Juno at the moment. 
Um, she does have her own private practice, so feel free to look her up. She's on the Juno Mental Health Directory, and she has her own private practice website, and she's also on Psychology Today, so you can easily find her online. Again, that's Dorlin Alper. And Carrie Klein is, a, is um, another art therapist, but she is working on her postgraduate hours at the moment, so she will soon have her credentials as well. Great, and then you'll enter the ranks as our third art therapist in about a year, so. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> Can't wait. And who gets art therapy? Is it mostly kids? Is it adults? Who, who normally engages with art therapy? That's a great question. Um, anyone can engage with art therapy. People do predominantly think of children because sure. children experience, well, children talk about their experiences through art. They're always drawing. It's just kind of this natural innate thing humans have, mm -hmm. um, especially when we're children before we assign terms like good and bad to art. Mm -hmm. So children can definitely benefit from art therapy. However, it's for anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. So, um, adolescents, adults, <laughs> couples, families. Um, yeah, anyone can benefit from art therapy. Okay, and what kind of conditions or diagnoses make the most sense? Hmm. For, like when would I, like what would I wanna look for in my child to know whether I should, or myself, because it's not just kids, Mm -hmm. um, but like, what should I look for where I would, might say like, oh, art therapy might, might make more sense than a more traditional therapy? Mm -hmm. Well, when I think um, from my own personal frame of reference, I would be thinking about, have you been in talk therapy in the past and has that worked out for you? Mm -hmm. um, if you have been in talk therapy in the past and it has worked for you, but now you're in the rut with maybe the same condition, the same challenge, I would think about alternative therapies like art therapy so that you can have a different approach to approaching your challenges. Um, also, I would just think about your child or yourself and think about their interests. Think about your interests. If you enjoy art, um, you don't have to be an artist again, but if you enjoy thinking creatively, if you're curious about exploring art therapy, if you're open to trying to explore in different ways, using art, I would highly encourage you to check out art therapy and give it a try. And it also seems like people who might be intimidated by just standing there or sitting there making intense eye contact and being asked personal questions, like mm -hmm. talk therapy in a room one-on-one -on -one is intimidating and sometimes Definitely. like to the detriment of treatment. So mm -hmm. if you think that it would lower that anxiety of receiving the actual treatment, then it seems like it'd be good for anybody. Definitely. Um, because again, you can make your art and all you're doing is explaining your artwork. <laughs> you don't have to say, this is exactly how I'm feeling. This is everything that's happened in my life. This is what's going on. Um, you can just draw whatever the directive is that the art therapist gives you. And then they'll ask you questions about that art piece. So if you draw a person, they might ask questions like, what might that person be thinking if they were thinking something? What might that person be feeling if they were feeling something? What might that person be doing? Where might that person be going? And so it's about your art. Um, and again, you're able to look at the art <laughs> um, rather than just sitting right across from someone that you've maybe never met before. Yeah. So it can be less intimidating for sure. I think it would be a lot less intimidating. Oh yeah, so you had me gather around up some items that so we could do an example. Can you talk us through what we're going to do and why this is a good example of what art therapy is? Yes, so today we'll be creating a mandala using found objects, and the objects could come from outdoors or inside your house. Um, as you'll see in both of our examples, we have different types of items that we've gathered up. And um, we're going to be creating a mandala, which is Sanskrit for circle. And the idea of creating this mandala is to enter into a state of mindfulness, so where we can be fully focused on creating patterns within the circle and fully present in the moment. And in doing this, our anxieties and our stress levels can kind of fade away. Um, and whenever those feelings of anxiety or stress may arise, we can just come back to the present moment, come back to putting objects down, to creating uh, patterns, and just fully focus on that. Um, I have created 
two different mandalas in paintings, um, just so that you can get an idea of what a mandala might look like. So again, we're going to be starting from the very innermost point of the circle and working our way out using a design or a pattern that we create. So this is one example, looks very colorful on the outside. <laughs> um, and this one is a bit more bland. And I would also like to point out that not everything is perfectly straight, as you can see, which for someone who might be perfectionistic, that can be kind of annoying. Um, but we can also use that to remind us of our humanity, of our imperfections, and of how we can still make beautiful things, we can still create beautiful things, and have meaning in our life, even if things aren't perfect. So, um, to begin, we'll just start by finding our items, whichever item you'd like to start with, Erin, you're welcome to go find. And I would encourage us to start with an object. I have this rock here, and I'm going to use this as the starting point for my mandala, because it's already circular, so it can help me to create a circle of patterns around it. So do you wanna begin or do you have any questions before we begin? Can other people follow along if they want to follow along? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so this would be a good time to pause and get 10 or more items and yeah. some kind of flat surface to put them on and organize it in some kind of circle type pattern like what you just showed us. Yes, exactly. And when if you do create one, it'd be great if you would like to share it in the comments. We can have a little conversation going about um, what you found helpful in this exercise. So awesome. I'm going to move my camera now. Yes. And I, I grabbed some onions and garlic from my kitchen. I bought way too many. It was an accident. I've been stressing about it for the past three days since I realized how much we have. I'm worried that I won't eat it all. That feels bad. And it just feels like a whole boondoggle. So I grabbed them trying to make myself feel better about the fact that I made a mistake. <laughs> Yes, it can have a new, a new purpose now in your mandala. <laughs> the other great thing about using found objects or objects around um, your home is that when we're done, we're going to disassemble this, whereas my paintings um, are more permanent unless I chose to rip them up or throw them away. They're more permanent than objects that we're assembling. And this can also serve as a reminder that, again, everything is temporary. And I think especially in this time of COVID when things feel overwhelming and like life as we know it has changed forever, um, making a mandala and then removing it from its pattern can remind us that this season is going to end eventually. Everything is temporary. How is your onion mandala coming along, Aaron? <laughs> I'm almost done. I have one more onion to move. Oh, that was really quick. <laughs> and so what are you working with? Can we see your? I can't see the screen and have mine on my table at the same time. So can you describe what you have there? Yes, so I started off with the, the circular rock as my starting point and I'm working around this rock with um, different muscle shells. Cool. And this can take as short a time or as long a time as you would like it to. Yep, but I made something quickly and I like it. It feels a little bit symmetrical, somewhat symmetrical. Um, I could see myself kind of erasing this and starting over a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. What were, did you have any thoughts as you were creating it? Any thoughts that came up? Yeah, so like you mentioned in the one example, like straight lines and symmetry. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want it to be symmetrical, but like they're all different sizes and these bulbs of garlic are, are in various stages of disassemble. So it's impossible to have it be really symmetrical. Right. So I'm trying to think of how to accommodate that. Am I just okay with it? Mm-hmm. And ultimately, I am okay with it. I have no choice. <laughs> um, I'm kind of bummed out that the onions are just in a circle, that I can't have them do anything else, but I don't really know what else to do. Mm -hmm. Let's move in a couple. Maybe um, 
Yeah, I do want After this video is done, you could cut them up. <laughs> yeah. And have different shapes. Ooh, if they were cut in half, there'd be a world of possibilities. That would be nice. Yes. So I think I'm I'm fairly satisfied with my quick mandala here. Um and yes, so I'll take a photo and upload it to the comment section so you can see it better, but just this rock with different muscle shells going different ways and then various little older rocks going in between the muscle shells. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that making this pattern just makes me feel a lot more calm and it does promote mindfulness for myself as I'm able to just focus on getting things balanced and think about what I need to do in my own life to bring balance to myself during this time of COVID and feeling maybe unbalanced some days. So that's awesome. I think for me, like, you know, like we were scrambling to get this video started in time. I was trying to gather up items and even like, you know, doing this live on a camera, I think it's less, you, I'm probably getting way fewer of the benefits than if I was doing it on my own. But even then, like I feel more, calm and at ease now after having done this mm -hmm. even though we're recording and trying to have a conversation and trying to make this for viewers as opposed to ourselves mm -hmm. like it's just it's nice to like cultivate something to make something exist yeah exactly so if anyone would like to follow follow along follow this directive and create your own mandala i would certainly love to see it in the comments if you feel comfortable sharing a photo um, and another idea that you could use this for is when you're going on a walk outside, um, practicing social distancing, you could assemble different items you find on a trail in, a, in the shape of a mandala and leave it for other people to find. Um, one time I stumbled across a spiral of pine cones out in Sunshine Cove and it was so neat to come across just in my everyday life. And so... It's kind of like leaving those painted rocks for people to find around Juno. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a bit of beauty, but again, it's temporary. And hopefully it can serve as a reminder that this too shall pass. And this time of COVID will subside eventually. And we'll never be in the same exact state as we are right now. So I hope that you can find mindfulness benefits from this mandala and that you enjoy making them wherever you are. Awesome. Megan, this has been so informative. I really appreciate it. Um, Thank you again. And since you are also part of curating this entire video series, um, it's got to feel good to check off two boxes at once. You get to get yes. another one of these videos done, and you get to participate in the video. It's a nice yes. little twofer. Yeah. Um, any last thoughts before we wrap this up? No, I um, just want to say thank you again for allowing me to share about art therapy. If anyone wants to learn more about art therapy, you can check out the American Art Therapy Association. And I believe their website is arttherapy.org. But I will double check that and leave that in the comments. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Megan. Appreciate it. Um, like we've said, we're saying in all these videos, you can find a list of therapists on junomentalhealth.org. And there's a lot of local therapists on psychologytoday.com or .org. You'll find it um, as well. And even though we're all at a distance, we can still connect. Um, that's a part of why we're doing this video series. We want to connect with one another, want to keep these conversations going. And if you or someone you care about are in a crisis, please call the Alaska Care Line, 877-266-HELP. It doesn't need to be a very immediate emergency, although you can call an emergency, but if you're ever worried about somebody and want another voice in the conversation, call the Care Line. They're extremely helpful. There's also a text line, 741-741. Thank you very much. This was Mental Health at Home series. Thanks, Megan. Thank you.